Hey guys, I'm Ike. I'm a front-end and software developer in Toptal. And we here today a talk about monads and why we have to use them in Ruby. So this is a talk why you shouldn't use them in Ruby. You know. So <coughs> Uh, it doesn't make sense. Okay. So why do they exist at all? I mean, there is a concepts that exist in programming languages like classes or for example types, and they all exist for some reason. So we use them. And they exist because of the functional languages, strictly typed functional languages. And they exist because these languages promise something. They promise to fix some issues we have, and these promise they they promise to be reliable when we compile them. They promise to not introduce more issues in the code than you have already. For example, if your code compiles, it should run precisely as you do it. It should show you where you have the state, where you have issue with your code, like uh, you have I operations. And these kind of things all rely on the simplicity of these languages. All strictly functional languages um, define only types and functions. So you have only these two instruments to do the stuff. And they even, in most cases, don't define any operators. For example, in Haskell, you don't really have operators, you have functions. All this kind of strictly stuff, it's all functions. So, what monads? This stuff is actually just helpers to deal with state or deal with I operations or deal with any kind of stuff that can be done with functions. For example, you have requests to backend. And how are the requests? You just drop you know, some kind of um, call to the get or to backend, get some data back. And this kind of data, you have to verify that it exists. And there should be if check or whatever check. So monads help to cover this stuff and hide them out from the actual code. So you have this kind of simplified pattern. You have just functions. Let's see. There is result. Um, it's one of the basic monads. It's very simple. It either has value, the stuff you got from the back, or it doesn't have anything. It has error or, you know, this kind of shit that you have to do. So this is a, actually this is definition of some kind of pretending functional language that does request to the backend, and either it gets result or it gets error. Something fails on the, I don't know, during the request. It's very simple and does its job. And what is more important for functional languages that it does not fail. So this thing will never raise any errors. You don't have any way to try catch this stuff. And this is what they promise. They promise to avoid this kind of situation where you have errors you're not aware of. And this way, with this result thingy there, it's the way to hide this error. To have this error, to deal with it later, not now, later, and be sure that if you deal with it, you are safe. You don't have any problems. So if it compiles, then it should be safe. If you deal with it. So what they do? They make you deal with it. It's very simple. Imagine we have this thingy. It's actually, this is some pretending Haskell language. It's not real. This is some kind of combination of some things that came to my mind. Anywho, the thing is, we do get and try. Uh, that and try thingy, it's variable. Imagine it as variable. It's constant, it doesn't matter. The most important part starts when we have case and try off. So here starts to happen the magic of the functional languages. You get the Pattern matching, which is really common stuff, we're all aware of it. It does check for this monad to have the value or to have error. And if you have value, you can do something about it. I mean, you can print it in the browser or, I don't know, show it to user. Something. Doesn't matter what exactly. And when you have error, you can return default stuff. Or you can, you can just still, doesn't matter how exactly do it, but you have to deal with it. So what is important about this example at all is that if you try to compile this in any uh, type of language, it will work and it will cover all the problems you have. But if you try to avoid the second case with error, 
this result error thingy, it will fail. It will make you sh to compile this stuff with all the cases covered. So you have to have all the checks in place. And this comes uh, very, how to call it? This is the place where it starts to work. If in Ruby code you try to do the same stuff, there is no one, nothing really, that can make you to check for this case. Yes, you can create monot in Ruby. You can create all this kind of magic around this stuff. And you can even try to create some kind of pattern matching algorithms. All this stuff is possible to be done in Ruby, but you don't get guarantees that this stuff do. And in essence, in Ruby, it doesn't really make sense because in Ruby, you don't have these enforced checks. And in Ruby, it's not different from rescue or if condition. So yeah, cheers. <laughs>